everybody. Welcome back to Last Night in Vegas. And tonight, we're going to be going to one of my favorite strip hangouts, the Collins Bar at the Fountain Blue. We're going to be doing something a little bit differently with this podcast, Last Night in Vegas, uh, by taking you through the night in more of a structured storytelling way, telling you about the people that I meet and the conversations that I have and the bartenders and patrons that I meet when I'm out here. So um, I'll try to make sure to give you detailed descriptions of the atmosphere at every step of the way. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the Collins Bar at the Fountain Blue. The elevator doors slide open as I strut through the long blue corridor lined with mirrors. I check the fit, making sure that everything is in its place. I continue to strut through the huge white marble Fountain Blue lobby, a huge arrangement of roses cascades from the large flower pots that make this the quintessential stop for all the Instagrammers and YouTubers. And oh look, there's one right there right now. Down the winding corridor and finally the sounds of an elegant grand piano fills the space. I look to the right and I can hear the bustling mix of cocktail shakers, boozy conversations, and the sweet sounds of the weekend's blinding lights coming from the piano. Walking into the perfectly moody Collins Bar, you're transported to the 1960s, a classy cocktail bar with midnight blue sofas and cocktail tables. A circular bar with a towering center sculpture that holds every liquor needed to fill any request. I sit down on the empty part of the bar with a perfect view of the piano. My regular bartenders, April and Pete, are on duty tonight. I'm in good hands. April, a former competition bartender, or as we like to call him in this town, mixologist, She's been bartending for many years, and I know her from the Nomad Bar, another one of my favorite spots that knows the difference between a drink and a cocktail. Pete is also a high-level bartender in my eyes, an old-school bartender, but not old himself, only 28 or 30. He's old-school in the way that he operates, knowing my regular order of an old-fashioned with makers, hold the cherry. These are my type of people. You have your local watering holes, and I have mine. The only difference is the drinks are more expensive and the clientele is significantly better looking, on any given night. The piano plays on. We have a good player tonight, playing a mix of hip hop, R&B, and a mix of pop classics like Prince's Soulful Purple Rain. He walks over and says, how are you doing, Mr. Ortega? I'm flattered that he remembers, but once he did tell me that he remembers me just because uh, the UFC fighter, the exact same name, but it's okay. I'll take it regardless. Pete says, the usual tonight, maker's old-fashioned. I nod and know that I'm already in for a good night. There's something to be said about when you're a regular. Sometimes it's places like this, and sometimes it's a dump. But regardless, there's a sense of home to it. Whether that be good or bad, it's an escape from our reality and a transportive experience to our imagined reality. Looking out to the corridors that lead to the casino, you can see the husbands and wives coming from the parking garage, possibly for a night out at one of the many restaurants on property. Then, out of the other side, you can see a group of freshly groomed 20-somethings strutting their stuff through the casino in miniskirts and the harsh walking of five-inch heels on white Italian marble. My drink arrives, perfectly golden, clear, the perfectly formed ice cube in the center. A jagged orange peel with a bonus. A lemon peel to make the drink pop with citrus on the nose. As I take a sip, I notice two sharply dressed women sitting at the bar. Dressed sexy, but not on the job, if you know what I mean. These are working professionals from Las Vegas. Again, not what you think. There are many women who have worked in town in the nightlife industry. And if they can stick it out long enough, they'll become executives themselves or become the wife of an executive. An equally important job. One of these women, who we will call Veronica, is celebrating a birthday. Slightly boozed up and chatty, she takes up most of April's time. Naturally, when you're alone at the bar, you listen to others' conversations. I'm no different. I hear she's here for her birthday and that she rarely comes to the Strip, a common phrase amongst most locals. Locals tend not to frequent the Strip for many reasons. Price tends to be a major reason why. But that means everything from traffic, parking, expensive drinks, expensive gambling, the list goes on and on. These problems are not new, and I'm sure will be here in the future. Vegas locals will be mad about the airspace is too crowded when they are flying their hover cars around the Strip in about 50 to 60 to 70 years. 
I take a sip of the old fashioned. Perfect. I love sitting at bars because you hear the most fascinating things sometimes. Like on this occasion, our birthday girl Veronica says to April, You know, I miss the days when you could sleep with your boss, and it was okay. Well, I think her assessment has some merit to it. It is fun to have a peek into someone else's mind, at least just for a couple of minutes. We made eye contact, and I told her that I overheard that it was her birthday, and I said, Happy birthday! And she simply said, Thank you. Veronica and her friend had to leave, which meant I was able to get the lowdown from April how the rest of the conversation went. April came over and told me that she was the second wife of an executive at Hakkasan Group and that she was celebrating her 45th birthday. And judging by the size of her ring, he was a very successful executive at that. As someone who frequents cocktail bars in the strip alone, it's very common to become friendly with the bartenders. It becomes interesting because you inadvertently learn about the lives of the people that work in the industry. I think I get along with bartenders because I empathize with them. A great way to get on a bartender's good side is to talk shit about the other customers at the bar. Is it scientific? No. But it's a really fast way to get on the same side as your bartender. This bar usually has two or three cocktail waitresses in skin-tight baby blue dresses and heels circulating the sofas and couches that surround this circular bar. I always wonder what these girls' lives are like outside of the hotel. They probably have boyfriends who work as nightclub porters or are getting their start as junior hosts or promoters at the same nightclubs. A fact that most people learn when they work in Las Vegas, more so here than anywhere else, you usually date inside of your own industry or property even. I usually don't know how people find partners outside of where they work. Shifting back to my old fashioned, someone must have been drinking my cocktail while I was entranced by the exquisite piano cover of Starboy, but I was out. As April made her way back around the bar, she asked another old fashioned, I think for a second, and said, what do you think you can make? April thinks for a second and then pulls out her phone and discovers a whiskey scotch concoction and springs into action. I usually disdain intricate drinks, but the bar was slowing down, and one of the things I've learned about high-end bartenders, they love to show off. April springs into performance mode, setting up the bottles in front of me like she was showing off her ingredients on an episode of Chopped. After splashing a combination of scotch, Irish whiskey, and Disserano, I was intrigued. Then she brought out the smoker. I hate smoked drinks. Which is why when I see someone put smoked old fashioned on the menu, I cringe. But trusting April, I went along with it. After a light puff of smoke sitting on top of this cocktail, she spritzes a perfect squirt of citrus from the orange peel, then drops it in. I ask, what's the name of it? And she said, The Godfather. I take a sip, and it was fantastic. A perfect balance of smokiness and a smooth chase of amaretto to finish it off on the tip of the tongue. After a few minutes, a good looking African American couple sat next to me perfectly dressed and complimenting each other. I love seeing couples like this. It's not necessary to dress like this every time you go out, but you can see the happiness in their faces, excited to be out in the town, love in their eyes, and drinks on the brain. They open the menu looking for something that says, we're out in the town. Having most of the menu memorized, I see them flip to the old world cocktails. Having tasted many of them, I was curious to see what they were going to choose. They are not for everyone and tend to lean to be a little bit stronger or more alcohol focused. I try to offer support to the bartenders. If the guest is trying to choose between two drinks and I've tried one of them before, I'll offer my opinion, waiting for the right opening. I'll simply say, I've tried that one before and I really liked it. This does two things. It creates an opening to talk about the drink and offer a better description. And it offers the bartender a better chance to sell the drink as someone has ordered it before. So it must be good. They order the Cuban Republic, a rum concoction that tastes delicious. They both take sips, and a sweet smile crosses their faces. This is what I love about lounges in Vegas. You can see people falling in love or missing the one they're in love with. And my personal favorite, thinking about what it will be like to be in love like that. Vegas lounges are the most amazing places. You meet the most fascinating people there. I've met former showgirls from the 70s and plastic surgeons from Minneapolis. Any evening that I go out, I never know what people I might run into, and that's the fun of it. So after I finish off my Amaretto Sour that I ordered while I was talking to those other folks, it's my new favorite cocktail that I order as sort of an exclamation point on my evening. I settle up with Pete and April, tip the piano player 10 bucks on the way out, and back to the garage to head home for the night. This is somewhat a typical evening for me. I usually go out, have a few drinks, meet some new people, get some new stories for the pod, obviously, and get to build connections with people that are in Las Vegas and looking for a wonderful evening out in the city of sin. 
This was the first episode of the new Last Night in Vegas. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'm going to try to make these as fun as possible and make it feel like you're out in the town with me. I'll probably put together some stories that I've had at the same bar multiple times over, but for the most part, you get what the idea is to go out and hang out with me. So thank you so much again for bearing with me as I get this new format off the ground. And I know it takes a long time, but I always appreciate you guys sticking with me as I try to make these more fun and more informative for you for when you come to the wonderful city of Las Vegas. So again, thanks again for listening. And remember, if you see me out in town, keep it confidential. <laughs>